Arch KRGT1 Best Motorcycle Review, Air Cooled SNS T12445 Degree V Twin. The list of 90,000 pound production bikes is short enough before you start adding any other stipulations into the mix. And if the first of them is to deliver a ride that doesn't leave you spending the same sum again at the sadistic whims of your local osteopath, then the list gets shorter still. But there is at least one choice. The Arch KRGT1 may have been cracking asphalt stateside since 2014, but the newest incarnation is now available on UK soil, and if the shock of the price tag hasn't already given you palpitations, then riding it will. Preconceptions have a funny way of proving themselves accurate, but not this time. You might expect it to suffer surging fueling woes, a soggy chassis and spine-compressing suspension. But it doesn't. 90,000-pound custom bikes are usually rolling art installations that are torturous in motion, but the arch combines bling with an unexpectedly accomplished ride. Yes, it's got faults. No, it's not really worth 90,000 pounds, although you try building a clone cheaper, but it is imbued with an intangible specialness that deserves to get the super-rich reaching for the build options list. Ride quality and brakes. Not only is the fueling oddly excellent for such a huge capacity air-cooled V, but the gear change is crisp and positive, and the cumulative effect almost die of esque in its penchant for egging you on to ride it harder. The gear lever is badly set on our test bike though, meaning that your natural foot position is at odds with its plane of action on upshifts, making toe bleedingly hard work of what should be effortless. A quick glance at the Moto Gadget dash reveals that it's really rather ineffective, but also that speed builds fast, and three figures arrive on the red out of black dot matrix screen with ease. What the occasionally active green dots mean is anyone's guess, but you'll only bother looking at the dash before speed cameras. Engine A sense of self-indulgence sweeps over you from the moment you thumb the starter and wake the enormous bespoke tuned SNS T12445 degree V-twin. The churning mechanical effort of ignition is palpable, and once thumping out its idle tune, you'll immediately want to kick a gear into place and get moving partly to revel in the oral assault of the 2032 cubic centimeters V's heavy breathing, and partly to make the appalling tick over shuddering stop. Providing you can pull away before your fillings work their way out through your ears, you'll be rewarded with a tide of smooth, addictive thrust. The throttle meets out the stomp with genuine precision, and from the moment you're rolling there's a creamy tsunami of grunt. That tide builds towards peak power across a rev range short enough that you'll crave a quick shifter to help slice through the robust Baker 6 speed box. Reliability and build quality. One of the great beauties of the arch is that there's not much to go wrong, and that the rafts of high-end parts it uses mean that, while they may be assembled in a fresh order, they're all well tested. SNS engines are bulletproof, as are BST wheels, ISR braking components, and Olean's suspension. The rest is beautifully packaged and resolved and there are no obvious cautionary areas of concern. Value versus rivals. There's no way to put this delicately. The Arch KRG T1 is bloody expensive. At 90,000 pounds it's dramatically outside most riders' remit, and even pre-owned ones are unlikely to be much cheaper. A used bike has never sold in the UK, so no one really knows what price tag one would command. Are the costs unfair? No, not really. When you understand the cost, quality and craftsmanship that goes into one, it all adds up. Cost of ownership shouldn't be any worse than a 20,000-pound bike, but spare availability will be more of a struggle, as parts will all have to come from the states, and some may need to be built to order. Equipment The arch is dripping with enough jewelry that you'll be as happy sitting in the garage on a rainy day reveling in its parts pornography as you will be to find a flowing B-road when the sun comes out. Finishes depend on your choices at build, but the detailing on the engine cases, Swedish ISR braking hardware and bespoke specto leans, expansive BST carbon fiber wheels, stunning billet single piece seat unit, billet tank, yes, really, an opulent LED headlamp all reveal new secrets the more you sit and stare at them. But while it will come with ABS in the UK, that's where the electronic rider aids end. There's no traction control, slide control, cornering ABS, braking control, launch control, or any other sort of control other than that exercised by your brain and limbs. And that's rather refreshing, isn't it?